Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. Um, so this is the second part. Uh, probably in the next once I create more videos I'll even lose track of what the number of video it is but anyway um, virtualization terminology uh, this is important to understand uh, various uh, terminologies virtualization we have already covered this now let's see what hypervisor is hypervisor is a so-called layer of virtualization software which provides virtualization capabilities or virtualization uh, tools or mechanisms so that virtual machines can be created on the physical machine and they can interact with the with either the base OS or the hardware so uh, by by with uh, keeping this definition in mind we get two types of hypervisors in general one is what runs on direct uh, metal direct bare metal like direct hardware like uh, KVM in Linux KVM like ESX VMware ESX server Zen at times is considered as both type 1 and type 2 we'll cover that later now how it runs directly on bare metal because Linux KVM as I just mentioned in the beginning uh, it, it's part of the Linux kernel KVM is the part of Linux kernel which is running directly on the hardware therefore it's considered type 1 hypervisor that's that means that the hypervisor or the KVM itself is running on bare metal and the virtual machines will just interact with it directly and type 2 hypervisor is like all those pieces of software which you install virtualization software which you install on any of the base OS like you install VMware workstation on Linux or Windows you install VMware server on Linux or Windows uh, you install parallel desktop you install Microsoft virtual server virtual PC on an existing operating system then your virtualization software or hypervisor is considered type 2 because it's not running directly on the hardware it it has to convey all the instructions coming in from the virtual machine or all the requests coming in from the virtual machine and hand them over to the base OS and then the base OS will hand them over to the hardware or run them on the hardware sometimes uh, Zen is considered as type 2 hypervisor as well it's 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 also called a hybrid hypervisor why I'm con con concentrating on Zen because again primarily this whole video series was designed on Zen and we'll be covering Zen in more detail than any other tool um, and because Zen is the best in my opinion uh, your opinion may differ so Zen how Zen works Zen has uh, Zen Zen has a kernel Zen special kernel Zen I can show you here uh, if you type this command here you name minus R it will show you that this version of kernel is installed if you check what all kernels are installed oops oops oops, oops. come on pipe through grip kernel okay you see this is the actual kernel installed this is the actual normal kernel and this is kernel Zen what what's happening here on this machine is kernel Zen I'll just show you uh, okay what's happening on this machine is that kernel Zen boots off and runs on the bare metal the hardware itself then this normal kernel it boots off on top of kernel Zen and it works and then, then it creates this so-called domain zero which we are going to cover just now I'm going to show you something very interesting just it will take just a minute etc grub.conf see here my default bootloader or kernel is uh, numbered one which is this one you see the kernel is Zen this version this is the kernel which is booted and 
my normal kernel so called normal kernel is booted as a module here it's different it's different remember it's different from this entry here how this is the normal kernel which gets installed if you don't have if you don't install Zen virtualization and this is your kernel which boots off this is your normal kernel so this is the difference your in case of Zen virtualization your Zen kernel boots up and your normal kernel is booted as a module whereas if you boot your normal kernel uh, your kernel is booted directly on the hardware and in it are the initial RAM drive and all that it we will cover cover this in detail later uh, a bit later let's go back here and see what an emulator is so an emulator is a piece of software which emulates all pieces of hardware for example VMware workstation right now Zen does not em Zen hyper uh, Zen para virtualization does not emulate anything, uh, and we'll be covering covering this in these uh, definitions just uh, a bit uh, later. Um, a shared kernel uh, is used in OpenVZ like uh, technologies, parallels, OpenVZ, change rooted, jailed virtual environments domain any virtual machine running on hypervisor is considered a domain it's not that DNS domain or the authentication domain which you guys are used to or those domains running on Windows networks no it's not that domain and it's not your website domain as well it's uh, uh, it's a term used once uh, talking about virtualization then any virtual machine <coughs> any virtual machine running on top of hypervisor is called domain now there are different at least two types of domains one is domain 0 and one is domain u where is that yeah here one is domain u what's the difference between them in zen terms domain 0 is the privileged domain and uh, how uh, is a privileged domain and domain U is is an unprivileged domain domain 0 is the is is the whole operating system which you are in fact which you are seeing here let me show you this this whole thing which you see here this this whole thing this, this full OS it's currently running as domain 0 now Zen, uh, Zen hypervisor, the kernel Zen, has been loaded on the bare metal or the directly on the hardware. But that kernel doesn't have any facility to to manage itself and to create more virtual machines, etc. So then there exists a need for uh, there exists a need for a management interface and the necessary tools and drivers etc which the main hypervisor the kernel Zen uses and with that uh, help it can create more virtual machines and manage virtual machines so you can call it a chicken and egg problem but it's not uh, domain 0 is the so-called privileged domain which is my this current OS is it's a privileged domain domain 0 and uh, I should add that it, this one is a thick domain thick domain 0 because I've got the full operating system installed even the office tools multimedia stuff everything is there on this domain 0 if I would use uh, if I would if I was uh, installing or setting up a uh, uh, I, I must say an internet server uh, production server elsewhere I would definitely not install all these graphic tools and music players etc 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 et I'll just cut off everything install only the bare minimum uh, number of packages needed to manage the Zen hypervisor so my domain 0 in that case would be a thin domain 0 and we'll cover that as well uh, shortly right now I'm just trying to uh, deliver certain 
uh, ideas or concepts uh, domain u or guest is also known as guest domain is also considered user domain are all the virtual machines created by domain zero and managed by domain zero as well so when you set up a Zen virtualization server you've got one domain zero which manages the hypervisor itself and the virtual machines now this term PAE is physical address extension is is a uh, this is the minimum requirement for Zen to run on a processor uh, I think I covered this earlier even if not uh, or any processor which is like Intel Pentium Pro or higher uh, normally has this feature available that means that you cannot use Intel Pentium or below Intel Pentium or 486 or 386 processors you cannot use those kind of machines to create uh, to install Zen and then to create virtual machines uh, because it does not support PAE the later versions support however still again there 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 are exceptions but they are very rare just check with your vendor and upstream processor manufacturer that these extension these physical address extensions exist basically they mean that your processor can address more than four gigabytes of memory going down to VT and AMD V they are uh, processor hardware assistance uh, extensions uh, they add various uh, uh, various uh, uh, you must say capabilities to the processor and provide those capabilities to the hypervisor running on top of them uh, there's a lot of detail available on Intel VT and AMD in short they are just hardware extensions for x86 processor architecture and all the recent pieces of software which use this uh, these extensions uh, they run pretty fast and the virtual machines on top of them run pretty fast okay so these are the tips if you want to know what your processor supports and I can show you my processor as well uh, I've got two systems ready for you right now basically I have three for this whole demonstration uh, two I have installed uh, one is this one which you see here this GUI and the other is another one now how would you know if your PC supports Intel VT or uh, AMD V um, AMD V extensions uh, processor extensions so let's say um, um okay cat slash proc slash cpu info oh a lot of stuff pipe through grab flag so it's a dual processor or at least dual core process system so i've got two lines and in this line i will search for vmx it's there so of course it would be here as well so this is an intel processor which you can see here uh, 3 gigahertz whatever so and it has this VMX support that means this this machine my this machine has um, uh, processor hardware assistance extensions now I've got another machine which uh, uh, probably has this IP which is my most favorite laptop it's an AMD based laptop now I just love AMD you don't have to agree with me but I'm in love with AMD so cat slash prox slash CPU info pipe through grep flag and I've got this this is again a dual core and this got this SVM in it so this is an AMD processor which has AMD's uh, hardware extensions available in it SVM and of course PAE would definitely be there PAE where is PAE uh, here PAE physical address extension there's one more thing which you want would uh, want to know or look for is this LM stands for long mode and that 
in turn stands for 64 bit processor so that means this is a 64 bit uh, capable processor with physical address extension with in uh, with amd's uh, hardware uh, assistance uh, hardware assisted full virtualization support so let's log out from here okay and this processor i was showing you here storage is again pae is there it supports long mode that means a 64 bit processor and uh, it has intel uh, hardware assisted full virtualization extensions all right so this is what i covered here we can just move on uh, okay one more tip that how would you know if the operating system you've installed is 64 bit or not let's see uh, uh, uname u name minus r no u name minus a okay so just before this GNU Linux you see x864 three times this is processor infrastructure and uh, machine something I not I don't remember exactly but all of these three things indicate this is a 64-bit machine uh, if I check this machine again I believe it it is 32-bit I suppose although the processor no it's a 64-bit system um, it's a 64-bit system as well that means my AMD laptop is also 64-bit OS installed and uh, let's check here I, I this is my uh, the screen from my uh, laptop from where I'm making this video let's see what I have here okay I have this x864 as well over here great so I've got good stuff uh, I've got all my machines luckily installed with 64-bit operating system uh, that's good for me it's good okay now what is PVM and HVM this is important and this is what we'll be hearing a lot and using a lot PVM stands for para virtual machine and a para virtual machine I have explained or at least mentioned a couple of times by now that it is uh, all those Zen uh, machines uh, running on top of kernel Zen and what is the main idea behind para virtual machine the main idea is there is no hardware emulation yes and in all sorts of other emulations and full virtualizations there is uh, a kind of emulation involved that you fake a processor you fake a hard drive you fake uh, fake memory etc to the processor and the uh, let's let's say not ram or hard drive but you fake your vga you fake network card those are the important important things in para virtualization you don't fake all these things you tell the virtual machine that you are a virtual machine you're running on top of a virtual machine and whatever you uh, need to execute you give it to me the the base os or the zen hypervisor tells the virtual machine you give it to me and i'll execute it on the same hardware and that is true that is the major difference my friends uh, in para virtualization the virtual machines run with the same speed and the same specs of the processor which is available to Zen virtualization which is available to Zen hypervisor itself whereas uh, in all the emulation uh, source of uh, things you get an emulated faked processor and faked VGA fake network card etc which is bad which is which 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 slows down things okay HVM is hardware assisted virtual machine or hardware virtual machine and that is uh, majorly KVM uh, Zen can also use this uh, full hardware virtualization extensions and can run in HVM mode as well okay so we'll be covering these technologies a bit later and now we'll cover what 
uh, why exactly why on earth as someone says should you use virtualization the benefits advantages are numerous yes, some of them I've covered here there may be other benefits not restricted to this list the first one is consolidation and that is the major benefit consolidation means that whatever you were doing on uh, let's say 10 servers you are able to do that on one server I'm not talking about efficiency I'm talking about reduction consolidation is like reduction you reduce 10 PCs from your rack you reduce 10 servers from your rack you reduce 10 PCs from your uh, desktop desk space or floor space you use only one or two you remove all the power requirements cooling requirements wiring requirements console requirements all of them are consolidated into few as compared to many in terms of efficiency consolidation is like suppose you were running your uh, uh, web server with uh, the CPU utilization going as high as 5% only I can give you a, a, a real uh, example I must say uh, to make you uh, uh, understand okay I have this traffic graphs here of my server uh, I, I've not restricted them for educational purposes and I intend to use them use this as an educational instrument as well you see that this CPU is the CPU of my web server is idling around 3% of usage it's a waste of this PC or server I must say the disk space is idling around 25% for many 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 weeks the CPU only goes high occasionally let's add it touching only 9% load average is not much network is not much okay so uh, you see the advantage is that this means uh, if you divide this hundred percent hold on okay if you divide this this hundred percent with this three that means uh, how many how many at least 20 more machines although it's not a exact division I can run 20 similar machines on top of this and that's true I can I can run provided I have enough IPs or enough further uh, infrastructure available to me come back to this uh, CPU memory disk bandwidth all these can be efficiently utilized I have this uh, 25 percent used only so talking in terms of disk space I can probably go four times this disk space contains a lot of backups as well so it can go down I can say to 15 percent of the total disk space so I can use in this hardware I can use four extra machines right away if I add more hard drives a couple of more I can I can definitely run more uh, more virtual machines so I, I can straight away I can benefit even from my existing hardware and that's the beauty of virtualization uh, support of multiple uh, like uh, I can run an application which supports only an older version of the OS let's say I've got an application uh, which supports only Red Hat 4.7 so I can create a virtual machine and uh, install Red Hat 4.7 on it and run my application perfectly fine uh, I'm not restricting to Zen by the way let's say your application needs some stupid application some 
rare application out there which runs only on Windows NT let's say and it's very critical to your organization you cannot afford losing it etc cannot afford upgrading it what to do and you've got all these new hardware coming up and Windows NT not supporting those new hardware so what to do simple uh, install virtualization software create a virtual machine with Windows NT on it run your application on it on that virtualized server or PC whatever that virtual machine with, will benefit from the uh, latest hardware which is provided to you through the base OS and that's the benefit of it so your legacy applications OS can still run another advantage is this compartmentalization which can either be service compartmentalization domain compartmentalization or role based compartmentalization um, that simply means that I can have three separate uh, suppose three separate web servers uh, three separate servers one can run web service one can run mail service uh, one can run anti-spam service maybe so or one can run database service so if one goes down the other two are not affected that's the idea behind compartmentalization you are avoiding or you try to avoid single point of failures um, and uh, remove dependency of multiple services on one piece of hardware there are failover and load balancing features like if there's if one virtual machine is uh, okay not virtual one virtual machine let's say you've got uh, two physical hosts running four virtual machines and one physical host has less load right now and one of the virtual machines on the other server is uh, two virtual machines on the other server are c causing quite some load on the f one on the physical host so you can migrate one one of those two virtual machines causing high load to the physical host which has less load right now or negligible load right now and that's how you can load balance uh, the load. Uh, this is also used in environments uh, in such a way that uh, uh, at night, let's say, if, uh, once the uh, traffic or processing is low, then almost all the virtual machines are idling out. So you can move the virtual machines, multiple virtual machines to fewer number of servers and shut down the rest of physical servers or at least put them in sleep mode and at daytime let's say six o'clock in the morning you again spread out those virtual machines to more physical servers because you anticipate that at, in the daytime you'll have more load um, that's that's how you manage this load balancing failover is like uh, uh, if if if, a, if your virtual machine fails on one physical host it can be set up to start on from the other physical host almost instant instantaneously there are certain conditions and configurations which must be applied one of the major benefits is development and testing you can uh, run multiple servers multiple operating systems multiple uh, versions of your code and see the their behavior how they interact etc um, virus testing this is important uh, patches can be applied on the test machines and then can be if successful can be applied on the on the real servers um, virus testing if you are testing how virus would spread and how to counteract it you're creating an antivirus software or something uh, you can test it in a virtual environment you can you can run a full uh, you can run all your uh, internet uh, attack uh, methods or techniques and test them in a contained environment so you know how to counter them how to create defense defenses against those attacks etc 
the same can be used for training this is very important again uh, it's it's very popular training uh, infrastructure now because each student can uh, now have a full virtual lab inside his own laptop or PC so gone are the days when uh, there was one big lab and which, which was time wise expensive to set up and then every student was uh, directed not to mess around because the reconstruction of the lab or the software or the configurations would take time now the instructors just come in they hand out the virtual machines to the students ask them to run them on their uh, virtualization software and they, he also creates uh, uh, a main lab uh, so to speak within the uh, campus network and a lot of experimentation a lot of experimentation can go out can be done like that virtual appliances is uh, is one of the benefits now you can uh, what you can create is like um, uh, a pre configured firewall let's say pre configured um, voice over IP server pre configured web server uh, hardened web server so to speak and uh, um, create an image of it and uh, publish it or keep it uh, in a safe place and deploy it as required so you don't have to go through deploying the Linux OS harden installing the right patches and hardening the all the stuff going through all your checklist the whole thing can be avoided it's just an image put it up somewhere put it up on the physical host run it through your virtualization software and there you go you've got your pre-configured server up and running without a hassle so it's very easy way uh, to deploy multiple instances of the same same server let's say you've got a web farm and you would like to have the same um, configurations across 10 servers you don't have to reinstall them all of them through kickstart or something although that's a method available but anyway you can just create 10 virtual machines out of a single image and reap the benefit okay legacy application support we've already covered and uh, of course applications would benefit the new from the new hardware but still running on uh, the uh, still running on virtualization software and someone said I, re I really like this idea uh, less screwdrivers true you've got less hardware so of course you you have less screwdrivers uh, this is probably what you might not have expected why not virtualization and yes there are certain places certain reasons certain scenarios where you cannot or should not use virtualization or these are the disadvantages of virtualization first is uh, it's it's it's, um, it's publicized as such that administration becomes easier uh, I personally do not agree to this uh, the big organizations companies those marketing uh, people they may create fantastic stories out of this that administration is easy of VMs no it's not because uh, it, it creates uh, another layer of complication basically uh, and since it's not a norm to what we are used to and remember we are like 20 30 years into PC into this computing now so we are used to as humans uh, thinking in terms of physical stuff so the virtual stuff uh, needs to be visualized in minds uh, and it costs time and understanding and this other than just visualization stuff means uh, uh, the extra hardware layer which I just mentioned the extra software layer sorry which I just mentioned this virtualization layer a lot of like virtual switches a lot of network ports and lot of routing lot of natting within one PC multiple virtual machines running through all this virtual infrastructure 
is quite complicated it's 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 it's, it's at times messy so administration is in fact not easy for from, from uh, in my opinion it is more complicated but your mileage may vary and uh, if you need live migration support which is not the case with everyone uh, you do need a shared storage and with, that is exactly why I have this third machine here for you to uh, demonstrate live migrations mm, okay virtual network problems like routing firewall switching bridging uh, it's it's quite complicated this is related to part one in fact then uh, other complications like bridging uh, or routing sometimes not all uh, service provider or server providers support I have encountered I've worked with server beach not worked I've been a client of a customer of server beach for a very long time now and I still am uh, unfortunately they do not provide the plain and simple and very easy to manage administer uh, bridged connections so I had to go through some netting and all that stuff uh, to get my virtual servers uh, accessible from the internet uh, that is not a big downfall uh, that's not a big disadvantage but still since this technology is new so not everybody is converged to it fully so people are uh, trying to support it uh, because it's a, it's a benefit for service service providers as well see if I need 10 servers I can take 10 servers from them but then they've got less number of servers in their infrastructure total count or their inventory count goes down they cannot entertain their next customers uh, for example uh, however if I use virtualization and I, I am pretty happy with two servers and running 10 or 20 servers on top of it uh, so that means their inventory uh, they, 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 they have more P servers in their inventory and they can serve more customers they can get more money etc uh, and their power expenses etc all those are also reduced uh, that is why it benefits them as well the virtualization technology however uh, because the billing methods are um, made uh, uh, developed according to the older uh, direct hardware technology so converging to virtualization is is a kind of time taking if not expensive all right another point is that your hardware should be more fault tolerant because now you are going to run multiple machines on one set of hardware so naturally your your hardware needs to be more fault tolerant more robust then another thing which is important is like console access which previously was very easy through KVMs and all that and uh, block devices virtual block devices and most importantly system recovery system troubleshooting are very complex areas to handle in virtualization they are not so straightforward so uh, these are the major areas um, major advantages and disadvantages uh, so to speak uh, we'll now cover these virtualization technologies a bit in depth I'm sorry you still have to go through a bit more of uh, theory uh, but I'll try to be as brief as possible and I'll cover these in my next video